Welcome to MWeb's Entrepreneur Zone. Today I've got Rui Estevez with me from Brewers and Union and the original founder of VDE Cafe. Welcome Rui. How's it going? Rui, tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. I guess the journey starts when you're a kid and uh, my parents had a big influence on my journey as an entrepreneur. My dad, you know, he was, uh, he was kind of kicked out of the house when he was 16. So he was on his own from 16. So he had to, you know, kind of fend for himself. And I think that's really the spirit of an entrepreneur is learning how to fend for yourself in, in the world against the big guys, you know. Um, and I started when I was young, uh, exporting South African surfwear and wetsuits and surfboards to, to Europe. Um, and then obviously going through school, university, um, started a business uh, in 99 uh, with my current partner, uh, Brad, um, and my old man, actually. Uh, he's been involved since the start. You know, sold that business, moved to Cape Town. We started uh, the first Vida Cafe on Cliff Street. Um, sold that in 2006 after we had eight stores, I think it was. Uh, and then we got into the beer business in 2007, and which brings us to present day. You've been in partnership with Brad for a number of years. Tell us a bit more about how you work together. Partnerships are tricky. Uh, they can either work really well or end up really badly. So far, it's been great. Um, of course, you know, you go through little, little bumps in the road. But generally, I think it's, uh, if I have to give anyone advice, is your partners that you choose should be sounding boards and they should be adding value to the equation. Um, as soon as a partner doesn't add value to an equation anymore, I guess that partnership you know, doesn't have a reason to exist. So using each other's sound boards, um, having different perspectives is very important. Um, yeah, and just learning how to work together with, with people. Um, I think that's the most important thing. When you uh, started your first cafe, did you expect that it would become the well-loved brand and, and synonymous with coffee in South Africa? Well, when, when you're starting something new like that, and it's something that people aren't used to, I mean, basically we opened up a store selling, I think we started with only muffins. So it was just coffee and muffins, and people looked like, look at us and like, what the hell are you guys doing? Um, so starting something with that new, and then the first couple of months, it's, you never expect anything, but you hope for it. Um, changing a culture is the hardest thing you can ever do, I think. Um, so you can only hope for the best, and, and what you come out with sometimes, you know, sometimes it works, but you have to keep at it. You talk about changing a culture, and both in the coffee culture and the craft beer, um, they weren't big in South Africa when you started them. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that. We didn't create a culture. What we did was just grease the wheels to introduce the culture. Um, again, you know, changing a person's perception is really difficult, but that's what kind of makes it exciting for us. Uh, to ch challenge people's perceptions and really see if we can change the way they look at something. Uh, for example, with coffee, when we started, it you know, of course, coffee was here. You know, there was coffee shops, um, but they were like selling steaks and uh, you know, spaghetti and everything else. So that's not wasn't really about the coffee. So we wanted to really challenge what people knew about coffee down to the quality. So we started something really just about the espresso. So it started at the espresso, of course, you'd add milk and, and, and other th ingredients to make a, a beverage, but it was really about that espresso. It was that focus that was important. And now in the craft beer um, area, that's really about changing perceptions in South Africa. We've got sure, some of the exactly. biggest brewers in the world, yeah? yeah? And you've come and competed in that, that market. Tell us about how you, you tackled that. Uh, again, uh, we try to focus on, go, go back to a product's roots. So, you know, with coffee, it was really about the espresso, the beans, the process goes into the roasting and every, everything else. With brewing, it's a very similar thing. Um, going back to, okay, wh where is beer now and where was it in the beginning? And why is there such a discrepancy between you know, the flavors that you, could, you know, that you could get in Belgium and Germany, where it's really the core of it, to now where we're drinking you know, fizzy yellow water that r remotely tastes like beer, uh, or what beer should taste like. So, you know, really about bringing those worlds together and challenging not only the consumer but also the big guys to say, hey, hold on, you guys have been pulling the wool over people's ass for so long. No, it's time to, you know, for us to educate them a little bit saying it doesn't have to be like this. It's really what challenging uh, people's perceptions is about. It's just saying, look, you have options. It doesn't have to be either, you know, wine or fizzy yellow water. It, there is things in between or there are things in between. So, And it, it clearly you have a, a real passion um for beer, 
but you combine it with a really astute commercial sense. I, it's not really just a passion about beer, but it's a passion, you know, if, I don't just drink beer, I drink wine. I, I love coffee still, it's just because I'm not in the, in, the, in the coffee business doesn't mean I'm, I'm not really passionate about coffee. Um, and, and beer is the same thing, it's something, that I, it's, it's, it's something that's part of my day. Um, so, <laughs> for a self, selfish reason, you could say that I really wanted to do this because I also would like to have a good beer guided bar and have a great beer in Cape Town before it wasn't possible. Uh, it really wasn't there. So it's kind of selfish and making money from something that you enjoy, that's really the bonus. Uh, but combining the two is where I think the, the real skill is uh, or, or lack of skill sometimes. And you've been successful in doing that. What advice would you give to someone who is in the type of business where it's been driven out of a passion or a desire to create something? How, how do they combine the kind of commercial part? I, I think you should be careful when you... Um, trying to combine your passion with business, you just got to make sure that it's sustainable. For example, um, I love surfing, but I'm not, you know, uh, <laughs> I could never make a living from surfing. I could never be a professional surfer. Um, so I wouldn't try because, I'm, uh, you know, I try and look, okay, in 10 years time, where would I be? I could either be, or for example, an actor. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, could I be an actor? I'm not sure, but I like to look at the odds. And that's, for me, that's business. Unfortunately, we can't all be professional surfers, but we can also do other things that we're passionate about and still make money from them. So, my, my, look, my advice is just to just look at the long term and to see if that's something that you could see, see yourself doing for five years. For example, I might not enjoy surfing as much if I had to make money from it. You know, um, I happen to like making beer and I happen to like making money from making beer. So that's also a good, finding a good balance between those two is important. Rui, in, in both those businesses, it's a, a lot about a great product and then building a brand on top of that. What advice would you give to people that are starting out and need to build a brand? Um, brand, it's, it's, it's always a difficult thing to describe what a brand is, but for me it's, a, it's an essence of something uh, that you have to communicate to people. Um, you know, certain traits, what is, how does the brand speak? You know, what does it look like? What does it smell like? Um, once you figure those things out, my advice is to stay as true as possible to the brand. Um, and, and that will keep the integrity of the brand and it'll kind of keep your message simple and focused. In, in the beer business, um, you have to work with a number of suppliers and people that you distribute to. Yeah. Uh, what's the secret to developing good relationships there? You know, a good relationship in business or in, you know, social aspects, it's the same thing. You know, you've got to be upfront, honest, you know, be immaculate with your word. Um, do what, you know, don't overpromise. promise um, Just basic social skills, really. I mean, a lot of people can't, uh, forget that, you know, when it's business, they forget that it's, you, you're talking to another human. You know, even when you're a consumer on the other side of a counter, for example, you forget that the, sometimes that the people working on that counter are just people. They go home and they've got the same problems as you have. So developing your social skills is, is, is critical to that. Are you finding, um, particularly in the beer market with the, the trend in social media, that it's a good way to kind of spread the message of something that's quite new in South Africa? Yeah, I think um, it's democratized, you know, talking to your consumer before you know, your, your channels were either through advertising or PR, uh, which a lot of small companies can't afford. And us as small guys, we need to compete in a different way to how the big guys do it. And social media kind of gives you that, that channel. It's, it's, it, there's a it's a tidal wave. Um, you just have to kind of, like, sorry to use a surfing metaphor, but you've got to figure out you know, how to ride it. Rui, you've started a number of different businesses and with each new venture comes risk. Um, I presume it was quite different when you started out and it was a, a, a small risk and you know, now it's quite substantially larger. Tell us your, your feelings on risk. Well, I mean, it's all relative. You know, when I look at when we started, uh, our first major business was in late, well, sorry, 99. Um, that amount of money was a big risk, but now it's a small risk. So it, it's, it, it, your, your perception of risk is, it changes over the years. Um, you know, there's, there's a financial risk and there's a risk of failure. Um, you, know, you can make your money back and failure, you can start again. But to get that return, unfortunately, you have to, you have to risk whatever. Some people risk a little bit, some people risk more. The more you risk, the more, the more you get in the end. If, 
you know, if, uh, if it's successful. Yeah, I mean, you bring up an interesting point there that the business started kind of just before the financial yeah. meltdown. Tell us some of the things that you did to see yourselves through that because you were launching premium brands. Yeah, look, we were still in the early stages. Um, we had to consolidate and I said, as I mentioned before, we had to kind of really look at what we were doing um, and, and build our foundations stronger, um, kind of forced us to slow down. Um, you know, and make some big moves while everyone was pulling back. And I think that's where the opportunity is, is when everyone's pulling back, that's when you need to be making big moves. If we look at uh, craft beer, you've been in it now coming up to six, seven years. Have you seen a big change in the South African market and, and who the demographic is that are consuming the beer? It's the first few years, of course, were difficult. Um, but in the last three years, it's, it's, yeah, I'd say the last three years, it's exploded. Um, and the demographic is anyone who wants a quality product, uh, anyone who cares about what they drink, who wants more flavor. I mean, I think that's most people. Some people don't care, and that's okay for them. And some people really, some people really do want an experience. They, they don't want to drink, you know, 10 beers in one night. They want to drink three, and they want to make sure that those three really taste good and, and, and make them feel good. Rui, you've got some great stories that are South African success stories. We featured your your some of your businesses before in terms of you know, the, the real standouts for South African success stories. What are your feelings about how, as South African entrepreneurs? I'm not going to lie to you. It's, we're not really, I mean, as entrepreneurs, the government doesn't really give a shit about us. Um, but, you know, I, that's kind of the spirit of it is, you know, screw the man and, you know, we're going to do what, we, what we're going to do. And that's kind of, I, th I think that's what fosters even more entrepreneurship is the fact that, um, unfortunately, the government it doesn't support us, um, and that that to me was would be the only disadvantage of starting something in South Africa. Rui, you started uh, in business young; it's clearly in in your blood. What's next for you? Uh, what's next is uh, carry on developing what we're doing: uh, more beer, more different beer, more countries, and really try and push the boundaries of of where we are. Um, I think. It's important to challenge yourself, and I think we've got you know we've got a, a long, steep road ahead of us, and it's it's fun it's fun hiking up that mountain. So we're gonna we're gonna carry on. Great, that brings us to our rapid fire questions. Rui, what's the best advice you've ever received? Your integrity is everything, and that carries through to everything that you do. And your best moment as an entrepreneur? In that Clue Street store was I think we were about ten months in, and. I looked up and I, I can't remember what happened was uh, there was uh, we were short staffed or something like that and I was on the coffee machine for like eight hours that day and I looked up for the first time that day and the place was packed and I thought okay now nah, this is it we we're gonna do we're gonna do this now and that was my best moment. And your biggest mistake? Was thinking that anything happens quickly because it doesn't. What quality do you look for in people that you work with? Integrity, attitude. And what quality does an entrepreneur need to succeed? Integrity, attitude, <laughs> uh, stubbornness. Um, yeah, those are the most. Those are the most important things. Yeah, I think. What's the biggest inspiration for you as a small business owner? Yeah, other other businesses that are succeeding or going on a, on a journey. And what would you do differently? I don't think there's anything I would do differently. What makes South Africa a good place to be an entrepreneur? Uh, lots of opportunity. And what keeps you awake at night? Nothing really anymore. I sleep quite well. <laughs> <laughs> and what gets you going in the morning? Gets me going in the morning besides my double espresso is the new day and the new challenges um, that we face and exciting opportunities. Re, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Paul. And thank you. We look forward to the coming weeks. We will bring you further entrepreneurs from South Africa. I'm Paul Hobden. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>